Hey, Treasure fans, your pal Big D back here again with Cobb for another movie review. And today we're going to be reviewing Star Trek The Motion Picture. Since Jacob has recently really gotten into Star Trek, he started watching the original series, which we did a video yep. about last week. And we did a video about The Next Generation. And now he's kind of slowly getting into the movies now, starting to watch the movies. Yeah. So um, we actually reviewed Star Trek, the 2009 version, last week. And actually, after this video, we're going to review another one for Star Trek Beyond, right? Into Darkness. Into Darkness. Okay, so we're doing a Darkness. That's okay. I thought you saw Beyond, though, didn't you? I did see Beyond, but okay. we'll do that next week. Okay. So we th he wanted to talk a little bit about Star Trek, uh, the motion picture. I have done, and I'll put a link to the video down below. I actually did my review. I actually went and saw it for the 40th anniversary of that movie in theaters last year. My wife and I went to a theater in San Jose and saw it, and I did a whole review on it, and stuff but he just saw it for the first time i yeah. and i gotta say i was a little bit surprised he actually watched it it's it is the slowest of all the star trek movies in, in terms of pacing yeah. um because it's more dramatic than it is action oriented in the yeah. movie um although you're lucky because you didn't see the original cut the original cut although the director's cut that you probably saw is a little bit longer they added they updated the special effects the special effects didn't look like that originally really? yeah yeah matter of fact the the only, the only reason why that movie got made was because of Star Wars. Mm. Um, it's not to say that Star Trek wasn't popular. It was, but they had done the original series. They'd done an animated series, and, and those were not doing well. They were actually working on another TV series called Star Trek Phase Two, But then after Star Wars came out, they scrapped that TV series and went with the movie. They should have done it. Well, it's funny because some of the stuff for Phase Two was actually in the motion picture. Some of the costumes and stuff like that they had used, they actually just moved it over into the movie, so... Um, would you like to see that? I don't. Would you rather have that or the motion picture? I much. I think honestly, much rather the motion picture, just because after that they did five more movies with that crew, whereas Phase Two wasn't going to be with that crew. It's going to be a, it was going to be a whole new crew. So at least we got to see the event, the adventures of Kirk and Spock, McCoy, and those guys. Yeah. So I I would prefer the movie. And yeah, it, when it came out, it didn't do. It didn't do as well as people were hoping for because of the thing. But, I mean, there was also a lot of issues with the movie, too. They wanted it to come out by Christmas. It wasn't done. They had to rush it. Yeah. They had, you know, they, there was a lot of issues making that movie. In fact, I just saw a really good documentary not too long ago about it and some deleted scenes that they never used. There was this weird space flight scene with Spock and Kirk floating around inside V'ger. Um, and they were going around this weird tunnel thing and stuff like that. They actually, they filmed it all and then cut it out. So there, there was a lot of stuff in the movie they didn't even put in the movie. Um, but, I, you know, even with all that being said, I've always been a really big fan of it because it is the start of the movies. And I've always felt that, that and I said this in my other video too, that I always felt this movie was more truer to the original series because the original series, as you saw when you watched some of those episodes, it wasn't all action. A lot of the original series episodes were very dramatic. They were yeah. very much, you know, you think of episodes like The Empath or The... This Way to Eden, or some of the other episodes that were very, you know, errant of mercy, stuff like that, that, that weren't really action-oriented. They were more, you know, story-driven than action. So, of course, you had your other episodes like The Doomsday Machine and stuff like that, but, mm -hmm. you know, you still had that. So I always felt that it was much more truer to the original series, much more truer to Gene Roddenberry's perception of the future. Yeah. I understand, as a kid, I was eight years old when this movie came out. Eight years old, I went to the theater. I was bored. I still loved it, but even there's some scenes I was just like, Oh, but I still liked it. But I have to say that as I've gotten older, I've appreciated it more. As I've gotten older and I know a little more about life now than I did when I was eight years old. And also I know a lot about my movie making now than I did when I was young. So I have a bigger appreciation, way bigger appreciation for it now than I did when I was a kid. But it doesn't mean that I don't always like it. Yeah. So um, what, what were some of the things you liked about it? Um, I... the. Well, I like all like the montages, like like when they first like see it, the new Enterprise A, eh? they go all around it and like montage the whole thing. It takes a little while. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's still really cool. Yeah, and you know it, it 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 was neat to see the crew come back. And we were just talking about this the other day, and he was like, "Scotty, what happened?" Yeah. Because Scotty was like this black haired gun thing guy yeah and then they move much front head all of a sudden he's got a little more weight on him he's got a full-on beard going now he's all gray you're like yeah. wait a minute dr mccoy's the same thing when you first see him he's got the full-on beard yeah. he's just like you're like all right what happened he shaved it though yeah he did shave yeah <laughs> but i mean they all look slightly different except for scotty i mean not scotty but sulu and Chekhov. they look pretty much the same yeah. still they didn't change too much but 
and Uhura too at that point. But the other the other ones, they they changed. Even Leonard Nimoy, you could see he aged a little bit. Scott, um, well, um, Chekhov, he mm -hmm. cut his hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have so much the bowl cut anymore. He had more yeah. of a part to it. Yeah, he, they got rid of that whole uh, monkeys cut thing that they used to do for. Davy Jones. So, but that was even when I was a kid. I remember that was the one that threw me off the most when I saw Scotty because I didn't recognize him at first. And I remember going, and "There, Mr. Scott." And I go, "What? What? What, what happened?" Because he didn't look the same. Now I got used to him, and you know, obviously he looked that way for all the rest of the movies and anything else, anything else he had done. But it was just so weird because he had the most dramatic change from the original series to the first movies. Yeah. So, and then all I can say is, thank God they got rid of those uniforms in the next movie. Because these uniforms were very much like the uniforms they used in the first two seasons of Next Generation was all one piece. Yeah. So they just, I don't know. Uh, it's very 70s style on those on those costumes. Yeah. So, But I like the change. And I, and, I, and I did like parts of it. I thought, especially when they did the re-edited re version and they upped the special effects a bit and they cleaned some stuff up. It looks really cool. And I love the opening scene with the Klingon war, the Klingon battle cruisers going in and each one of them are taken off one by one yeah. by Beedra, you know. and there's some really neat stuff in that movie. There's some really cool stuff in that movie, too. And there's actually two different endings of that movie. I've never seen the other ending, but there's another complete ending to it um, where they kind of... It was only described to me once, but it was a little bit... It was a, a, a different type of ending, more interaction with Beedra, I guess. So, but, um, you know, for a first outing, for a series, of, for a series, I mean, think about this. It was a TV series that was on for three years, yeah. and then it, it was canceled because of bad ratings. And here you are, literally ten years later, and you got a movie come out to theater. So it's it's a it's a it's a really good comeback story for us for a show, you know. And it has a stop run. What year? It's the fifty second anniversary this year, I think. So I mean, it's still going strong. And Motion Picture was the first one to really start off for the movies, and after that, and you had Star Trek Two, which was an amazing success, and you just went from there. So. Um, out of all the Star Trek movies, don't mm -hmm. count the um, new one, like the new newer ones. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite? People always ask me that. You always ask what's my favorite. It's really hard for me to say. Everybody always screams Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and, and don't get me wrong, that is an amazing movie. I mean, it's well directed, it's well acted, everything is on point in that movie. But if I was really to be honest with you, I'd have to say Star Trek III. Um, is it's for Spock? So for Spock. Um, it's not one that everybody likes the most, but I do because again, I felt it was so it was more true to the original series. And what I like so much about the fact is that it's not like they got a big ship going off with all the crew going in to save the day. It's like just the core members band together to save Spock. And I like that aspect because it's that it's a very family kind of driven movie. Because at this point, you're seeing that they are a family. Those people are actually a yeah. family. They all work together and they all care for each other. And when they know that one of their one of their friends is down, they they all rally together. They break the rules. They violate Federation rules, Starfleet rules, everything else. They steal a, a, a Federation starship to go save their buddy. Yeah. So that's why I like it so much. And it was Leonard Nimoy's first directorial debut. And I think he did a really good job. I liked. You haven't seen three yet, have you? I haven't, Spock, any, yeah. I haven't seen it. But there's a, there's a battle between the Klingon Bird of Prey and the Enterprise. And there's just a lot of really, there's a lot of cool action. The, there's a big destruction of a certain ship in the movie. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that happens in it. I, I just, I've always thought, always had a lot of fun with it. And to be honest with you, it's the first, it was the first, second movie I ever bought on VHS. Really? The first one being Star Trek Four. It was. It, I take that back. It was the first we ever bought a VHS. Cause I, got start, I, I put the deposit down for Star Trek Four, but I couldn't buy it. But it was the first one I bought it used at a, at a home. It was a home video. I think at Capitola back in the day. So it was like the first movie I ever owned. So it it kind of has that special place in my yeah. part too. You know, my first VHS tape. I was so excited. So, but um, I would say probably three is is my favorite. But don't get me wrong. I love all of them, even five. I know people bash five, but there are parts of five that I really do like. The climbing scenes at Yosemite, I love. Even some of the cheesy battle scenes in the movie, were, I, I did enjoy. So um, I've loved them all. Uh, it's hard for me to rank them. Um, but, you know, I'm a big fan. It is what it is. Starfleet Academy on my shirt. That's what I got to do. So anything else you want to say about it? No, no not really. All right. Well, then that's it. Um, Cobb and I want to thank you guys all for watching. We really appreciate it. Click. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and... There's gonna be a uh, around November. There's gonna be a 
peak like a couple weeks for Star Trek because we are on Black Friday we are doing the marathon. We are. And we will review all the movies that all of us watched. So Yeah, we are gonna do a marathon. We're gonna sit down and watch them all. Midnight to midnight. Midnight to midnight, so so that is it. We want to thank you for watching. Um, please leave us some comments down below. Click the like button, the subscribe button, or the bell, and that'll notify you when we do put up new videos. We usually put up one video or sometimes two videos a week on our discussions. Yep. Um, we both want to thank you so much for watching. Please take care and be safe. And as always, live long and prosper.